Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter Equilibrium. I told you in the previous parts about physical equilibria. We discussed what are the characteristics of physical equilibrium or equilibrium in physical processes. We studied about phase transformations, we studied about solubility of substances or dissolution of substances in a liquid. And we understood what are the conditions under which a physical equilibrium can exist. Having understood all that, it is now time to move on to chemical equilibria. And that is the topic of this video, equilibrium in chemical processes. Let us start understanding equilibrium or equilibria in chemical processes. Let us take a, a hypothetical equation. A plus B are the reactants A and B. They react to produce C and D which are the products. So we have reactants A and B which are in equilibrium. The double arrow shows the existence of equilibrium or the establishment of an equilibrium between the reactants and the products. What do we understand about this process? We started with the reactants. That's how we usually start our reactions. We start with uh, the reactants and these reactants, they react with each other and the reactants are consumed to form the products. So what happens to the concentrations of the reactants and the products? Initially, when you just started, when you brought the reactants, what was the concentration of the products? The concentration of the products initially was zero because there was no product formed. Until the reactants react, you, you're not going to have products. Now, when the reactants start reacting, the reactant, let us say we had one mole of A and one mole of B, they will start getting consumed. As the reaction proceeds, the, both the reactants will be consumed. So the concentration of the reactants continuously decreases. At the same time, the product is being formed and therefore the concentration of the products goes on increasing. Now, since this is a reversible reaction, what happens? The products as they are being formed, for any reaction to take place, you need reactants. So for the opposite reaction, the reactants are C and D. And initially there was no C and D because A and B had not reacted to produce C and D. Once the C and D start getting formed and are present in the reaction mixture and they are enough to start reacting with each other, that is when the opposite reaction also starts. Now, the rates, rate of forward reaction is more because the concentration of the reactants is more. And the concentration of the products is slowly increasing as A and B react. C and D are being formed. And these, this C and D which is being formed will react to give you back the A and B. So as C and D, the concentration of C and D increases, the rate of the backward reaction increases. And as the, the A and B, the reactants are being consumed, the amount of reactant is going on decreasing. Therefore, the rate of the forward reaction decreases. It starts it starts the reaction and then the concentration is going on decreasing and the rates and forward and backward reactions when they become equal at that point equilibrium is established at that point we say that the equilibrium has been established because the rate of forward reaction the rate at which a and b are decomposing or sorry reacting to give c and d is the same as the rate of c and d which are reacting to give you back a and b so it's a dynamic state it appears as if nothing is happening while that is the point of maximum activity in the reaction mixture or we call it the equilibrium mixture let's just read about this the concentration of products goes on increasing because initially we started with the reactants and the reactants, the concentration of the reactants goes on decreasing. So the rate of forward reaction is decreasing while the rate of backward reaction is slowly increasing. So eventually both occur at the same rate and the concentrations become fixed at equilibrium. And this is the state which is known as the equilibrium where the rates become equal. So it appears as if it's a static state. And remember, equilibrium can be achieved even if we started with the products. If A and B react to give C and D and it's a reversible process, if we had started with C and D instead, we would have achieved the same equilibrium. 
Only C and D would have given us A and B and there would have been an equilibrium between them. It's the same thing. Then C and the concentrations of C and D would be decreasing and the concentrations of A and B would be increasing until both the processes, opposing processes, the rates became equal and when the rates became equal, the equilibrium would be established. Let us understand this on the basis of this graph. In this graph, we are assuming that A and B are the reactants. If A and B are the reactants, at time, this is time and this is the concentration. At time zero, the concentration of A and B, which is the red curve, is highest, is the maximum. And the concentration of C and D, that is the products, was zero. As time passes, the, the concentration of A and B goes on decreasing because it's being used up to make C and D. And at the same time, C and D start being formed and their concentration goes on increasing at the same rate. And then finally, there comes a stage where the concentrations, the change in concentration, it, you get a horizontal line for both of these curves. That is when the rate at which the concentrations of C and D and concentration of A and B, they become fixed that state and after that if you move on in the state of equilibrium this horizontal line will continue so an equilibrium is established between the concentrations of air yeah, is established between the reactants and the products at which the concentrations of a and b and c and d they become fixed that state is known as the state of equilibrium Equilibrium, again, it's a repetition of the same point. It's an emphasis that equilibrium can be established from both sides because it's a reversible change. If you take this to be the reactant, then the equilibrium is moving. You, you are starting ex assuming this to be the reactant and this to be the product. But if we started with the products, then that would be the reactant and that would be the product. But equilibrium would still be established and it would be the same. We know that the state of equilibrium is dynamic in nature, which means there's a lot of activity going on. In physical processes, uh, we did observe this dynamic nature of the, of the physical processes. In chemical processes, it is possible to actually give evidence of the dynamic nature of the equilibrium. And that is done by a process which is known as uh, a, a reaction, which is uh, Haber, he, had, he has a process of making ammonia using the nitrogen of the atmosphere and hydrogen from petroleum products. And using this, he manufactures ammonia, which is used in the fertilizer industry and at many other places. This Haber's process can be used to give evidence of the dynamic nature of the equilibrium. Let us see how it is done. In Haber's process, ammonia is prepared from nitrogen and hydrogen. Although the, we are not, the focus of this study right now is not the actual Haber's process, which let me just tell you, because when you come to that portion, it would be a revision for you. Nitrogen from the atmosphere is used and hydrogen from petroleum products is used. In the presence of a catalyst that is iron, at 450 degrees Celsius and 200 atmosphere, Haber produced ammonia. And therefore, this name has been, the name for this process has been given um, uh, after him. It's known as the Haber's process for manufacture of ammonia. And it is a way of fixing the atmospheric nitrogen because nitrogen has, uh, we have, uh, the atmosphere has 78% nitrogen, which can be used in the fertilizer uh, industry and for manufacture of ammonia. Well, that is not really related to the equilibrium part. Let us now focus on the equilibrium. Now that we've understood, let me just remove this because our focus is not the actual Haber's process. Okay. In Haber's process, you have nitrogen and you have hydrogen and you get two moles of ammonia. Now what, did, what is done? If we take, instead of hydrogen, we know there's another isotope of hydrogen which is deuterium. Now deuterium is nothing but hydrogen. What does a hydrogen atom have? A hydrogen atom has one electron and one proton in the nucleus and no neutrons. Deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen which has one electron, one proton just as hydrogen does, only it has one neutron in the nucleus too, due to which the mass of deuterium becomes two. It has one neutron and one proton in the nucleus. Now, <coughs> excuse me, 
If we take deuterium instead of hydrogen, that is D2 molecule instead of uh, H2 molecule, for and we carry out the Haber's process, we get the same equilibrium, we get the same uh, equation, and the equilibrium is established in the same manner. You know what? Deuterium is, uh, it, chemically, it is exactly the same as hydrogen. The reason being that the chemical properties of any element, they depend on the electrons in the outermost shell. And since both hydrogen and deuterium, they both have, a, actually the hydrogen that we talk of is known as proteum. It is one of the isotopes of, uh, hydrogen has three isotopes, that is protium, deuterium and tritium. Where they have, where proteum has uh, one proton, then uh, deuterium has one proton and one neutron, therefore a mass of two, and tritium, as it names three, it has one proton and two neutrons, therefore a mass of three. Anyway, the chemical properties of deuterium and tritium and proteum are exactly identical. The only difference is in the mass, it, they are bulkier, they are heavier, the deuterium and tritium. So when we took deuterium molecule instead of hydrogen, that is proteum molecule, we got the same equilibrium which was established. So how do we explain the dynamic nature of the equilibrium? What was done now? If we took these two reaction mixtures, that is equilibrium mixtures, at equilibrium, what are the species that you have in the mixture? You have nitrogen, you have hydrogen, and you have ammonia. And in this mixture, that we were carrying out the reaction, we had nitrogen, we had deuterium, and we had ND3. Where ND3 is also ammonia, only with deuterium atoms. So what was done? Both the equilibrium mixtures were mixed, which were already at equilibrium. Under the same conditions, both the mixtures were mixed. Now the react the mixture, the complete mixture, had my all these species, that is the six species. Nitrogen, of course, from both of these, hydrogen, deuterium molecule, ammonia, and ND3. When so many species were present, and we left it for a while, and it was in equilibrium, and we knew that the entire process is already in equilibrium, and uh, let us assume that we don't know it is a dynamic state. It was observed after a little while that the species, they started showing a little difference in their uh, molecular structures. When we used only deuterium and only proteum, we got only NH3, only H2 molecule, and N2, of course, is only N2. When we had this mixture, we found after a little while, we started finding species where the hydrogen was not pure hydrogen. NH3 did not have either proteum or deuterium. It had both of them. Such complex uh, mole I would not call them complex molecules, but mo they are the same molecules, only with both the forms, allotropic forms of hydrogen were present. So now in the reaction mixture, we found species like N2, H2, which were the ones that were already there are still there. We didn't find N2, we didn't find H2, we found D2, but we also found one atom of hydrogen, uh, protium and one of deuterium. Then in ammonia, we had nitrogen with two proteums and one deuterium. Then we had ammonia with one proteum and two, two deuteriums. And of course, NH3 and NB3 in the pure uh, H, um, the protium and deuterium forms were also there. Now, this was evidence that although equilibrium had already been established, yet we were finding these species, what could be the reason behind it? That the reaction is still going on, the atoms are still separating and going and forming the combinations with the other atoms. And therefore, both the processes are still going on and this proves the dynamic nature of the equilibrium. Now, this is the graph that was made for Hegel's process. We started with hydrogen. We know there are three moles of hydrogen, so the concentration of hydrogen is three times that of nitrogen, assuming this is three times, it's not to scale. And the concentrations of hydrogen and nitrogen go down, and the horizontal line shows that it becomes uh, fixed, and that is when equilibrium is established. At the same time, we started with no con zero concentration of uh, what ammonia, which was formed, and equilibrium was established. And if we had started with ammonia, we would still have got the equilibrium only from this side. There's one more uh, equation 
or um, equilibrium that we would like to study here. It's the equilibrium between hydrogen and iodine to form HI, hydrogen iodide. H2 plus I2 will give you 2HI. This is the equation. And as you can see, the double arrow shows that there's an equilibrium between these. Why are we taking this example? Because there is, again, something that I would like you to understand. We understand that equilibrium can be established whether we start from the reactant side or from the product side. Equilibrium will still be established. But there is a possibility to get, the, to get exactly the same concentrations of uh, both the atoms, that is both the uh, elements and HI to have exactly the same concentrations if you start the reaction from this direction and the number of atoms of hydrogen and iodine are counted or you start from here with the same number of atoms of hydrogen and iodine. Let us say that I started with 2HI, exactly 2HI. Then the equilibrium when it is established, whatever is the concentration of hydrogen and iodine and whatever is the exact amount, I will get the same amount even from that direction. If I weigh them, if I find out the masses of all of these, they would still be the same. Why? Because under those, under specific conditions, equilibrium, um, the equilibrium mixture contains fixed concentrations of the substances. Whether that substance is acting as the reactant initially or was it acting as the product initially. Yet, at equilibrium, their concentrations are fixed. Therefore, if we start with counted number of atoms, the equilibrium mixture will also have counted number of species of all reactants and products. So if total number of hydrogen and iodine atoms are the same in a given volume, the same equilibrium mixture will be obtained from both sides. Now, we have a graph for that. Let us say that this, this, the vertical line or the y-axis shows you the concentrations and the horizontal axis shows you the time. Initially, and time we are starting from both sides. The first time, we are starting with uh, hydrogen iodide to be the product because it's, its concentration is zero. And hydrogen and iodine to have uh, the highest, uh, what, um, highest concentration. And we start with it and slowly what do we see? That the concentration of hydrogen and iodine goes on decreasing till it becomes zero. And the concentration of uh, what? The concentration of HI goes on increasing till it reaches a horizontal part. At this horizontal part we say the equilibrium has been established. Now at the same time let us assume that we started with the reaction now this does not proceed to zero it cannot go actually to zero because once equilibrium is established the concentration of hydrogen and iodine becomes constant but if we started from the opposite direction then at time zero now do you see the arrow for the time is in this direction at time zero the concentrations of hydrogen and iodine this time was zero because that was the product and HI was the reactant which had the highest concentration and they come to the horizontal line. But both of them come to the same horizontal line having the same concentrations at equilibrium. Whether you start from this side taking uh, the hydrogen and iodine to be the reactants or we start from the opposite side taking hydrogen iodide to be the reactant and hydrogen and iodine to be the products. So this was about chemical equilibria and now we'll study them much more. We'll study about equilibrium constant and we'll go deeper into chemical equilibria. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.